The Los Angeles Angels have signed Brandon Drury to a two-year $17 million deal to be their utility man for the 2023 MLB season. Drury was fantastic with the Reds last year. He was solid with the Padres, and then now he is going to be a halo for the next two seasons. He even won the Silver Slugger last year for the new uh, utility position that they added to the Silver Slugger category. What is up, YouTube? It is your boy, Namar Sports here, coming back at you with another MLB video, and today we're going over my thoughts on the Brandon Drury signing uh, ignore the room that's still a work in progress and of course my collared shirt I just got off work this signing was announced while I was in the middle of my shift I did get a promotion which is why I got my collared shirt looking extra fancy today in business casual before we get into today's video I did want to give a shout out to Thrive Fantasy for sponsoring this video check them out at the link in my description get a 100% deposit match up to $100 when you sign up with my promo code NMR or just use the link in my description you'll get a 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks and you'll get two free $20 contest entries when you sign up and deposit at least $10. If you deposit $100, you get four free contest entries. It's just free money. Check out the full details in my description. And without further ado, let's get into Brandon Drury and start talking about him. All right, here we have Jeff Passan's tweet. Oh, utility man Brandon Drury and the Los Angeles Angels are in agreement on a two-year $17 million contract. Sources familiar with the ESPN. Drury 30 won the Silver Slugger at the utility position last year and is the the third bat the Angels have acquired this winter. Now, Brandon Drury has been an interesting case since he came up in 2015. He's always had good exit velocity. He's always hit the ball hard. He's always been, you know, league average to slightly above average when it comes to speed. And he's kind of been a utility man all over. He's He's been... Uh, a little bit of a journeyman the last couple of years, but he started with the Mets. He was with the Reds to start last season. And then, of course, he was a huge piece at the trade deadline because of how good of a year he was having over there in Cincinnati. You can see by his spray chart here. I'll go ahead and move my myself here so you can see it. You can see by his spray chart, he really benefited from that hitter-friendly ballpark last year in Cincinnati. If you look at his, his home run chart, as you can see here, pretty much every ballpark, if he had to play all of his games there, he would have been um, he would have had less home runs is what I'm getting at here. So he definitely benefited from being at the hitter-friendly ballpark in Cincinnati, where if he had played all his games there, he would hit 32 home runs. But when you look at a, uh, a ballpark that's not quite as hitter-friendly for him, like PNC only had 16 if you played there, 20 in Comerica, 19 in Kauffman, and even 23 at Angel Stadium. So the 29 home runs, I don't necessarily think that that is going to happen once again. But, uh, you know, a solid amount, 15 to 20 home runs, I, I would really think would be a a realistic expectation for Brandon Drury in the following season but uh, honestly he's just really good he hits the ball hard he puts the ball in play he strikes out about at a league average rate so he's putting the bat on the ball which I really like to see and he's above average when it comes to outs, outs above average especially for utility man it means he's good defensively and he can kind of plug the holes because the Angels are known for getting injured throughout the season so you know he's gonna have to probably play some third base when Anthony Rendon goes down he's probably gonna play a lot of second base or maybe even some shortstop as well and then maybe even first base if Gio Rochella and Jared Walsh go down so uh it's, it's really good defensively to have a guy like Brandon Jury around and offensively, it's going to be a huge improvement as well. If you look at the stats here, these are the short, or sorry, these are the third baseman who played third base for the Angels last year and had at least 20 at bats. So you can see Phil Gosselin, Jose Rojas, Jonathan VR, Jack Mayfield, David McKinnon, Matt Duffy, and Anthony Rendon. Uh, they, they were just bad. They were just flat out bad. The only one who was slightly above league average when it came to offensive production from the third base position was Anthony Rendon, who of course we expect a lot from, but everybody else else was an absolute train wreck especially Phil Gosselin and Jose Rojas here putting up a negative WRC plus and then we look at Brandon Drury Brandon Drury was solid last year offensively especially compared to those guys here you can see he had a 123 WRC plus 263 average 320 on base 492 slugging as a whole last season he hit the 28 home runs in the regular season 87 runs scored 87 RBIs so he has a he had a very good season last year and honestly the strikeout rate's pretty solid uh for you know current MLB standards 22% is not terrible it's a lot lower than guys like Mike Trout so I realistically I I really enjoy the signing I think it helps us a ton especially at the third base and the second base position I don't even want to look at Angel's second base options here you can see these are the players who had a uh, had 20 at bats or more at the third at the second base position last year with Luis Renjifo matching Anthony Rendon's 103 WRC plus and everybody else being well below league average 
average. So <clears throat> brain injury really helps us offensively. And of course, defensively is going to be solid as well. And now looking at the lineup, I, I, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say we're a playoff team yet, but this is an above 500 team. This is an above 500 team. Taylor Ward, stud. Mike Trout, one of the greatest players in MLB history. Shohei Otani, <clears throat> the most talented player in MLB history. Anthony Rendon, very talented guy. If he can stay healthy, he could be very good. Hunter Renfro, power threat, huge power threat. Brandon Drury, very solid hitter. Jared Walsh, all-star first baseman if he can be healthy this season. Logan Ohapi is the wild card of the season. If this dude pans out, if he can put up like, you know, Jeremy Pena level production that the Astros got last year, uh, let alone a guy like, you know, Adley Rushman for the Orioles last year. If he can bloom into somebody like that, maybe 20 home run pop, hit about 250, you know, 300 plus on base, maybe slugging in the 400s, 500s, hopefully fingers crossed. Logan Ohapi could be the big wild card this season. And then of course, Luis Renjifo. We saw what he did last year. I'm not sure if I have the most faith in him, most faith in him, sorry, for him to repeat that production. But I do like Luis Renjifo as much as the next guy. And then it makes our bench look a lot better. We still have Gio Rochella, who's definitely going to get a whole lot of playing time. David Fletcher will get playing time. David Fletcher's an elite shorts, or uh, sorry, an elite second baseman defensively. So I love having his glove out in the field every once in a while. I just don't like him being an everyday starter for this team. And I think we're good enough now where he won't have to be an everyday starter, which I love. Mickey Moniak showed some good improvement last year. We also have Joe Adele, who of course has a whole lot of potential and then Max Stassi I love as a backup he wasn't great as a starter last year but I love him as a backup catcher especially with how good he is defensively we know our starting rotation's gotten a lot better this offseason and then even our bullpen is looking a little solid I do like our internal options as I discussed in previous videos I'll try to put that link in the description as well so overall this Angels roster is really shaping up to be something nice I think Brandon Drury is the only move that could have changed my mind on the Angels 2023 season at this point after missing out on all four of the big shortstop signings, I think this move is pretty much the best thing that the Angels could have landed uh, with the current state of free agency. So let me know if you guys agree with me down in the comments if you think that this move is a, a could be a potential game changer for the Angels. I think my hot take for this is the Angels will finish the season above 500. I know it doesn't sound like much, but we know what our expectations should be at this point for the Angels. We know every year we think they're going to make the playoffs. We think they'll sneak in. We think they have an outside shot at a World Series, and they disappoint us every year. Being realistic and looking at this team and how, you know, you know Anthony Rendon's going to get injured. We have the depth to replace him. You know probably Hunter Renfro might go down with injury. You know Jared Walsh might go down with injury. You know Mike Trout's going to go down with injury. So we have the guys to replace him this season, where in the previous years to especially last year we were really hurting with that depth just looking for really terrible wild, uh, waiver wire pickups so let me know if you agree with me if you think the angels are going to be an over 500 baseball team last, next year or if you want to go a step further say we're a playoff team i appreciate you guys watching as always don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and want to see more mlb content and don't forget to subscribe for more daily mlb videos i'll see you guys all in the next one i hope you have a great rest of your day